This video shows you how to make a Raspberry Pi rover, which you can control from anywhere in the world. We'll do a separate video for um, the software and the parts. Alright, so first thing we're going to put our Raspberry Pi into its little case. Um, if you've got one of these cases that come with it, it can be a bit tricky to get it in. Okay, um, so what, uh, what I remember is it's got to go in at an angle. Uh, and that's all I remember. And then I remember being frustrated for about five minutes, not being able to get it in. So best of luck with that. There we go. And make sure it's all lined up here and we're happy. Then we can put a lid on it. But you don't really need any screws at this point. It's happy in its box there. Look at that. So for the base of your rover, you can either use your terrible woodwork skills like I have. I got a bit of wood and done something like this. Um, but really you can use anything. Uh, you could get something like this. this. is a lovely box, so you can make it really inside the box. You could put some wheels on the outside, and kind of a boxy robot. Uh, but just to show that you can really use anything, we're gonna use this Real Robots DHS tape, and we're gonna build it on top of this as a base. Um, so maybe, let's see. This can go here. We'll get our our battery packing up the front. Maybe um, we're gonna have our wire splitters, so the wires come out to there. And uh, what else? I mean, oh yeah, we need some batteries. So a battery pack can go there. I'll put some wires coming out. And let's say the wheels. We'll just put the wheels on like that. You know, and that'll be that'll be perfect. Cool. And we're going to, instead of using nails and, and stuff, we're just going to use double-sided duct tape because we want to do the quick, quick version. So we're going to put the motor controller in now to control all the motors. If you've got uh, the new Pi, you'll have a whole series here. You put it down near the bottom, in the first 26. If you've got the, the elder version, you can see it's only got the 26 there, so they, they just go on like that. Okay, awesome. This might be a little step, so just go wiggle it left, right, left, right, left, right, wiggle, 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 then push it down. Make sure you don't bend anything, but it's fine. Excellent. It's all done there. We're happy. Okay, let's put this back in the box. It probably won't go in there. Uh, okay, so we're going to flatten these out so we can get the lid over them. There we go. Right, uh, so that's going to go there. So let's whack it down with some double-sided sticky tape. So I guess the way I'm thinking of doing this is there are four motors in this pie. So I'll have a pair for each one of these. So one, two, three, four. And then the last two I can use for the power for the, the motor power pack, which is, in this case, which is these batteries. Um, the Pi power, to, to drive the actual Pi, that will just go straight to the Pi. We don't need any wires for that. It'll just be a phone charger cable straight into the terminal. All right, so I'm gonna put the each of the wires in here in pairs. When you're doing this, just be real careful. If you tug on this at all, the solder's gonna break. So you've gotta be real, real delicate. This, to, to imagine it's all made of dry spaghetti and it could crack at any moment. So I'm going to go for plus minus, plus minus, plus minus, plus minus, plus minus, and the last two I'll do like a plus minus power. So the plus I believe is at the, the outer edge here. It's, if you're not sure, flip the thing upside down and you can see. You can see here, it actually says plus on it. Okay, so there's a the plus. You're going to follow that down and put it in this guy here. And then screw it down real good. Deadly. Then, now we're going to take the minus one here, at the bottom. And the minus one can go in the next one. Okay, so that's the first uh, motor ready to go. So if we put a motor on these two now, that motor will be, will be happy and drive away. I'm gonna, gonna do that for now 
motor two, motor three, motor four, and then I'll do the power at the end. When you're doing this, make sure that these jaws are closing on the wire, the metal wire. If you close it on the insulation here, the rubber, you're going to get no contact and your motor won't work. Motor in. What's your price? For okay, so that's them all connected now. So now we need some motors to connect up to it. So the wire uh, goes to the two little metal points on the DC motor. Okay, if you get them backwards, doesn't matter. Don't worry about it because your wheel will just go forward instead of backwards or backwards instead of forwards. And you can always just fix it later. I put some numbers here so I can match up the motors just so I don't get confused and get stuck in thinking which wires are going to what motor. Okay, um, right, let's do it. Let's take motor four here and, all right, let's put these on. Okay, now it's horrendously messy, but you know, it's almost there. Okay, well, we've got everything done, but now we've got our motors all connected up with four motors. We've got our uh, little power pack connected up. Just a reminder, this is the, these are the batteries that drive the motors. You need a separate power source to work your little computer here, your Raspberry Pi. That's why we've got two power sources. This is a five volt, which is just a normal mobile phone charger. This can be anything you want. You know, you want to drive a massive uh, 25 wheel monster. You need to put more batteries in here for your motors. But you know, whatever makes the motors work, you can put in here. This guy's got to be five volts for the pipe. Let's do it. You can screw them on. We're going to be lazy and use duct tape. Yeah. Cool. And we're going to put the uh, the Pi power on here. So this power powers the actual computer, which is separate from the battery power for the motors. Okay, so it's just a normal um, Samsung, or not Samsung, any kind of an Android micro USB thing. I don't know if iPhones, do iPhones use those things nowadays? No, they use something stupid. Okay, that guy goes in there, deadly. Now right, we're almost there. So now we put on some wheels. Who's a, a look at it there. I think it's looking pretty good. Ah! <laughs> God, his brain's fell out. <laughs> okay, stay. And you know we need a double-sized duct tape? <laughs> no, I think this little screws came with this that I didn't bother to put in. Right, so we're going to put the memory card in now. This is a new pipe, so I'm going to use the small one. This little lad. Hey. And this goes in here, in that little slot, until it clicks. I can't remember if it goes upside down or not. Let's just put it in. And push it until it clicks. Yeah, clicks in. All right, I think it's ready to go now. Okay, so at this point you'd normally go off and do the software. Now, I'm I'm not going to do this right here. That's going to be a separate video. Uh, we're just going to continue, assuming that you've got the software ready. Right, so. This is it all, it should work, and look at that. So the very last part of this is really just figuring out which way the motors are spinning. And you kind of put these in here by at random. So the motors could spin any which way. And then what you do is you just switch around the wires till you get the wheels going in the direction that you want. Uh, I found by spinning these motors when I turned them on there just two minutes ago, the two ones are going forward. The crawling forward is brilliant, and that will move the rover forward. Uh, this one here is moving the rover back, but this guy here is moving it forward. So I've got three going forward and one going back. So what I, I don't want is a tug of war. Um, 
if you have two wheels going forward and two wheels going back and you turn them all at the same time, you start having a tug of war to see which motor wins. Uh, I had a go at this and what happens is um, on your motor controller, that little fuse there, the little white guy, uh, that smells of burning and then then your Pi just stops working. Well, not your Pi, but your, your rover, the motors don't work. Okay. Um, so I went on to the Pico board forms and asked very nicely how to fix it. Uh, they told me what part to get. I got it. I tried to put it in. I failed miserably. So I gave up and just put a chunk of solder all over it. And that kind of like bridged the connection, which is dangerous because it could damage your Pi. Not dangerous, dangerous, but just expensively dangerous. Um, and uh, anyway, so yeah, now it, it works again. I, I put into my program uh, a little line so that when the these wheels uh, go forward, these wheels here, they, they turn off. It's part of the programming. Okay, so that's a line in the code that I added to the normal one uh, script from the website because of that that took a war. Uh, so I just want to make sure that this one here now is the right way around. And it's real simple to swap them around um, because we've got this lovely uh, connector here. All we do is we follow the wires. These wires will lead you to here for this wheel by the look of it. And I'm just going to just unscrew these, swap them around, put them back in. And uh, once I switch those two over, it'll be working again. Okay, let's go for the three point turn. Plus the edge. Um. <clears throat> Perfect. Almost. Deadly. Easy.